whatever. Like, I don't, I don't need to play that out of the small blind. Yeah. I could just sit my coffee and... Fold the blinds, fold the blinds, fold the blinds. I'm so high on this topic because this is the one thing that I am more sure than any other topic that can make any player a better player basically overnight, which is... When there's one or more limpers in a pot and you're in the small blind, just break the habit of mindlessly completing the small blind. Cool. All right, let's let's talk about it. I'm I'm excited. <laughs> I'm gonna learn something here. Let's yeah, it, it's really huge. There's so many aspects of this. One of them is that being out of position with bad hands in hold'em is the worst thing there is. It is. There yes. really is no other thing you're ever gonna experience in your poker life that's worse than being first to act with a bad hand. Right. And so when it comes around to you, and let's say you're playing one, two, mm -hmm. and there's a few people live and it costs you a dollar to call. Right. When you call there with, say, queen four suited, okay. like that typical type of hand where it's normal to complete the small blind. What dollar? I, I just played yeah. it right, boom. And I'm gonna strongly suggest, and we're gonna suggest that you no longer do that. You are paying a dollar. You're actually paying a price to enter into the worst situation you're ever gonna be in. Right. So when you look at it like that, it's kind of silly. Right. right. Now, there are a lot of things on the other side that, that are in favor of calling. But even with all that, mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe that the best play is to call. At the top of the list is a thing I call act last percentage. Okay. okay. So, Everything we're going to say here starts with the presumption that all of us watching this video believe one thing, which is if you have a choice, you'd rather act last than act right. first. Right. <laughs> That's pretty much standard, right? right? I mean, no surprises there. Anytime somebody talks about position, they're always assuming that being last is good. Right. right? And even interestingly, the theory, like Andrew Brokus's book, Mm -hmm. points out that position is theoretically powerful. We knew it yeah. was good, but the theory is now proving that right. it's good. Right, so we can feel it, it's been proven, there it is. So that's why if you're on the button and you have, say, queen four suited mm -hmm. and three or four people limp, if you want to limp along there to see the flop, that's not a terrible play, right? Because your last act, you, you know, when you flop a flush draw, you're gonna win the maximum when you hit the flush draw. If you don't hit the flush draw, you're gonna pay the least to get there. Right. You're gonna get opportunities to just bluff hands when they check you just because you're on the button. All kinds of wonderful things happen on the button. So the idea behind act last percentage is if you believe it's better to act last than to act first, mm -hmm. and you did nothing more than act last more than they do. Right. Hour after hour, year after big. year, yes. that's an advantage. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. In yeah. my book, Waiting for Straighters, I claim that I act last on 80% of the streets I play. Oh. I mean, it's a massive advantage. Right. Uh, it used to be 60%. But, and that was a big advantage. But then mm -hmm. I kept folding more and more from the blinds, more mm -hmm. and more from the blinds. And that's the point I'm making here is every time you fold the small blind, you are raising your act last percentage. You fold the queen four suited for a dollar. Everybody else is going to call that for a dollar. And so that means that you're going to be acting last more because you're folding the first position more. It's the reciprocality thing yes. that when you fold the queen four suited and they all call with it, you've shifted the balance that you are acting last more often than they do. So let's just say you're in the habit of completing the small blind almost all the time when there's multiple limpers. Right. Okay. Well, what would happen if you started folding 50% of your hands from the small blind, mm -hmm. right? You'd still be playing plenty of marginal hands. Yes. You, you know, <laughs> you'd be throwing away all the crap hands mm -hmm. every single time. 
what would that do to your at class percentage? It's just right. massive. Yes. So that's one reason, it's just pure theory, is that the more you fold the blinds, the more often you'll be acting last. So another benefit that comes from folding the small blind and limp pots is that people do notice that. <laughs> You know, okay. sometimes Lee and I talk about how you can do things and you can't be sure if people are noticing it and if you should adjust based on what they saw, right. they notice this. They notice, right, when right. five people limp and you fold for a dollar, that goes noticed. And then your job is to use that image mm -hmm. that you've created by those folds and exploit it later. Okay. Right. And what happens is you do get higher fold equity. Mm -hmm. When you do squeeze from the small blind, people are going to be a little that more That is definitely true. And I was just yep. thinking about that very thing that when they see you folding the small blind, uh -huh. they just might actually notice. Right. And then when there's a raise and you three bet out of the small blind, they're like, whoa, yeah. this guy actually folds the small blind. What was he raising it with? Exactly. <laughs> and you and win so, the pot. Well, you either win it right there, but let's say they call it their Jack-10 suited or whatever, and now it comes Ace-10X, and you bet. They got to give you credit right. for a real hand because they've seen you fold the small blind. Wait. So you do build some extra fold equity with those yes. folds. Let's say you like the idea of folding more from the small blind, but you don't think you're going to have the discipline to do it. <laughs> There's two ways to go about this. One is to just jumpstart it, and the other one is incrementally. Right. If you want to go incrementally, what I suggest is that you just fold 10% more than you do now. If you're not folding at all, then you would just start folding the very, very, very worst hands. The very worst ones, yeah. Yeah, with the idea that you would gradually build up and mm -hmm. fold more and more from the small blind. But at first, you just got to break the ice and you know see if you can <laughs> even do it, it at all. Right. Then the other way to do it is to just jump in. Okay, and if you want to do that, uh, let's say you wanted to fold 50% of your hands, right? which I think is a reasonable number. Here's a chart, here's a starting hand chart of what a 50% range looks like. This would give you just a rough idea of the type of hands you would be folding from a small blind if you were to adopt this 50% range. And if you want to, you can just pause the video, screenshot that, and take it down yeah. to the casino and see how it works <laughs> out. <laughs> Good idea. And for overachievers, here's what a... <laughs> well, usually we don't think of overachieving as running away more often. <laughs> right? But in this case... But ahead. in this case, overachieving means folding more. And so, so here's what a 66% folding range would look like if you were to go that high. And this is up in the range that I use. In case and you're curious. Just for those of you that are more used to thinking about a playing range, it's a 34% playing range you're completing a third of your small blinds in yeah. limped pots, which is gonna feel super snug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a tight range, and this is the range that I recommend to my clients okay. who want to play snug from the small blind in limp pots. Okay, Tommy, I really have to ask you because I okay. think I know the answer to the question, but just in case, what is your complete, the small blind mm. range my actual range Your is actual range. 22%. 22%. Yeah. Wow. So I, I, I complete it's with... It's not uh, like a glove. It is. I, I complete with... beautiful thing is it's a safe experiment, mm -hmm. right? It isn't like if you start folding a few more hands from the small blind, you're going to go broke doing this. Right. Ever since Tommy and I started hanging out a lot, and I've gotten a chance to go play a bunch more than I used to in mm -hmm. my working days. Yeah. I've gotten used to just really snugging up in the small blind yeah. and it feels really good. I'm glad you like I it. Because I just get so tired of playing crap hands yeah. and even marginal ones. Right. Like queen nine suited. It's just like, whatever. Like I don't, I don't need to play that out of the small blind. Yeah. I could just sit my coffee and watch the game go by. Here's another thing. 
If you fold a small blind, now you can just pause, relax, watch the game, and get ready for the show that really matters, which is your button and cutoff. Yes, that's right. And so in the whole yeah, you've got a big show coming up. No, but but it's true. That, you know, it's a it's an orbital game. It's mm -hmm. cyclical, and the blinds are the time to fold. You're out of position, you're raising your act last percentage by folding, mm -hmm. and you get ready for the button and cutoff when you're ready to go battle with, with a much wider range. You know, Tommy, you're talking about something like, okay, it's a dollar, so you complete with your queen four suited. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that once the flop comes down, even if you get a flop of, say, jack 7-4 with one of your suit. Right. It's yeah. like, where are you now? You've got bottom pair and three to a flush mm -hmm. and an over card. Right. And you're like, well, if I was going to complete with queen four suited, this is kind of hitting the flop. Yeah, so, so what you're saying is like, let's say one guy bets and it's folded around to you. And then you're like, what am I going to do? Do I right. call? Do I raise? And if you call, what happens next? And right, exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. That's exactly the problem, that you get yourself into these really awkward situations. Right. And you think to yourself, man, maybe I should have just folded it in the first place. Or even if you have top pair, are you ever going to win a big pot? I mean, that's a really interesting thing, because if you get bottom pair, you can kind of fold and whatever, right? Yeah. But if you flop top pair, should I stay or should I come So, Tommy, is there anywhere I can learn more about this <laughs> obsession that you have with folding the small blind? Funny you should ask that. <laughs> I wrote an article called Folding the Small Blind in Limp Pots. There you go. <laughs> Happens to be the name of this episode. Um, yeah, it's at my website. Check it out. It's got all this and some other stuff. We'll put a link to that article down below, and you can just click on it and go... I think our take it to the casino moment is a really interesting experiment would be to start folding the small blind a bunch when it's limp to you and see how it feels, see how it goes, and then leave a comment down below and tell us how much you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, like our videos, leave a comment, make suggestions, and share the love. Thanks a bunch. We'll see you next week. <laughs>